Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Uh, it is Tuesday, and yes, your eyes do not fool you. We are doing the Three Amigos two days early because it is that important to you. Dion is about to go off grid for a week. Who knows what he's going to be doing? I don't want to ask. I'm a little afraid, but he is here today because he wants to do the Three Amigos with you. How you doing, Dion? Howdy, doing great. And that tripped me up. I thought we were recording today, releasing on Thursday, but so cats out of the bag. I'll, I'll be out of town. Nope, we're going to post him today. Sorry. Nope. Matt and I will just talk Tuesday. We'll just flip awesome. it up. There mm -hmm. you go. And uh, Mr. Lumberjack, you're down in the studio. Look at that little thing behind you. I like it. I am. I am. This is uh, the mini Lumberjack behind me. And so, yeah, down in the new yeah, he, studio. He looks, he's got a six pack underneath that uh, that uh, picnic table shirt. It's amazing what airbrushing can do. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it, all you have to do is you basically take a keg and you draw lines on it. Oh, there so you go. That's, that yeah, works. That's basically a little bit of shading. Get, a little bit of shading. Yeah, that's how you get the six pack. So yeah, down in the new studio, a little echoey because we haven't put everything on the walls yet. But that happens this week. But yeah, excited to be down in my new space. And if you listen very closely, you can still not hear the whimper of children. So it's kind of <laughs> nice. There you go. Well, uh, Dion is going to read a quote uh, from someone. I just kind of want to. I want to give my spin on it before he does. Basically, there are lots of people who have been watching those channels that believe beyond belief that a major crash is coming mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, bet the farm in 2011 prices. So uh, we're going to read this quote and then we are going to close our eyes for a second and we are going to wake up and it will be 2011 prices. And then we are going to ask each other what happened to our business. Cause I think, I don't think a lot of people understand. So, uh, Dion, why don't you do the pleasure of reading this awesome quote? So this is a very nice person who doesn't cuss, so I don't even have to edit their stuff. And they've commented on Matt's channel quite a bit. Um, this was one of the nicer ones. Oh, no. <laughs> the first sentence is the one I like the most because we need to talk about this the first sentence after I read the whole thing. People who have tons of investments are in denial. We are going to see prices go as low as 2011. I would bet the farm and put my head on a guillotine and hand lumberjack landlord his ax that the housing market is going to majorly crash. I have total confidence that I am walking away with my head when all is said and done. <clears throat> well, lumberjack, that went on your channel. Uh, yeah. Why don't you get the first chance to, to kind of respond? Uh, because I guess all of us have lots of investments. So she, this, this comment is aimed at us. It is aimed at all of us. Um, you know, I think that this is a, a consistent um, opinion that is ill-conceived. Um, it's a lack of understanding of how our businesses operate. If we picture ourselves in 2022 in December, and we wake up Christmas morning <clears throat> and we say, or New Year's, New Year's morning and say, wow, all of the prices of all of my properties are down to 20, 2011 levels. It doesn't impact my business one second. It doesn't. Well, see that, well let, let's just, so, okay. I'll, so I'll, we'll, we'll get there. I'll here. further unpack. The reason that it doesn't matter is because I have 30 year fixed rate debt. And so if all of my business value, value of a property I don't invest for appreciation. It's nice that I've gotten it the last few years. It's kind of, frankly, more of a pain in the ass because I have to continuously increase my PFS and redo it. I prefer, a flat, well, I prefer a flat market because it just doesn't matter. It's all about cash flow. It's all about cash flow. So in the idea that 2011 prices are what happens and the market majorly crashes, I got news for you. There's billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars on Wall Street that are going to jump in and they're going to buy ahead of the curve. That's what they do. And so you've got investors like us all with six to seven figures in dry powder sitting there waiting to act. You've got people that make us look like a rounding error oh, yeah. with tens of millions, 20, you know, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars ready to act. And so none of the things that caused 08 exist today. They are starting to become more existent because of the interest rate, interest only loans and the, and the, the adjustable rate mortgages. But again, if I look at my portfolio and New Year's Day, 
I see that prices went back to 011. Oh my word, am I busy putting out offers? Yeah. Because even if rents come down 50%, which they won't, but even if they did, people that count on something going to zero, it's not a stock. Mm-hmm. People still have to live places. And even if rents come off 20%, guess what? I'm where I was two years ago. If they come off 50%, I'm where I was 10 years ago. All my properties, even in that setup, almost all of them still cash flow. And the ones that I've had for that much longer of a time, they make up for the ones that might be shortcoming losses. So really, if you run the business like a business, even wishing 2011 prices I can promise you this, the bank's going to be really tight in putting loans out there with DTI. I'm going to get a loan before Joe Homebuyer gets a loan because I can put a lot more cash into the game. So that's my kind of two and a half minute um, short story on response to, and and they also need to understand that a guillotine, I don't need my axe, a guillotine. (laughs) It's kind of redundant. A (laughs) A guillotine's axe included. But yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I have a lot to say on this, but we will give it to Dion first. Dion, uh, when you <laughs> saw this, you read this. What did you think? What What was going on? So, so the thing I've learned anytime that you see a comment is you take a screenshot because my response was, and I have two things to say about this. But my response was that would be awesome to see a decade's worth of inflation disappear. Yeah, mm. it's not just appreciation. I mean, supply and demand impacts appreciation, but the weakening of the dollar. Most people don't understand that the value of of land and properties stays the same. And then supply and demand impacts it up or down. But as the dollar gets weaker, it takes more of those dollars to buy it. So if we saw 2011 prices, we'd be eliminating a decade's worth of inflation. I agree with Matt halfway. He said our business would not be impacted if we dropped to 2011 prices. Now, what, what it would take to have prices drop that much is a mass amount of forced sellers. So the foreclosures, the short sales, the whatever. So just all of a sudden it's flooded. Prices drop that much. All of those people become renters. Yes. Our business would be impacted and we would start getting way more rent. Like bring it on. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So many people say the same thing. The first sentence, that's the one I got tripped up on is people with a lot of assets are in denial. No, we're hoping just like everyone else. Like we don't want to see other people suffer that it would take to co- cause a crash, but We'd be kids in a candy store shopping. Yes, our rents wouldn't be impacted, other than they probably would go up. Right. Um, so, so the reason I took a screenshot is as soon as I gave that reply, yeah, they, they deleted. It. Yeah, yeah. I just love those comments that they delete. So I got to start taking screenshots. So here, here's the deal. Um, I've already been through this cycle once, so I mm-hmm. can tell you without question what what happened and. The first thing to point out is what, what was the first line? People with lots of units are in denial. People with lots of assets. Lots of assets, assets, investments are in denial. Oh, investment. So first and foremost, that is wrong. Right. And this this is why. So again, if I close my eyes, so let's just give some numbers. Let's assume my portfolio is worth thirty million dollars, and I close my eyes, and now it's worth fifteen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, first off, that sucks. Let's admit that. That sucks. Sure. I I am. I might even have a negative net worth. I haven't in this story. In this story, let's pretend like I have a negative net worth. I'm worth. I'm my debt is worth more than my assets. That sucks. It does. It sucks. Uh, my cash flow hasn't been impacted. None of these other things. But here's what this person is really missing. I am not impacted at all. I'm grouchy. I'm I'm grouchy. I'm grouchy. But at the end of the day, I've never done this for appreciation. I'm on record saying I think net worth is a bullshit statement. Yep. Um, you know, uh, who who is going to be hurt? Anybody who flips, short term debt crushed. Anybody who has three, five, seven year arms like yep. apartment buildings crushed. Yep. yep. Um. If anybody's been watching our, well, yeah, anybody's watching my channel, you know that I spent about nine months getting all of my variable rate debt into 30 year fixed. Don't care. I have no resets. They can't call my loans. They can call loans. But here's the missing ingredient that this person doesn't understand the people with lots of investments can diversify their risk. Joe and Jane, homeowner, are fucked. And I swore on purpose. 
They're they're they are done. Done. Their largest asset, they are underwater. They're not going to make the payment just like last time and they're going to become a renter. They're done. This does not hurt me at all. In fact, my rents go up. Right. I have millions of dollars ready to deploy. Wall Street will buy alongside me and I will be a kid in a candy store. You people don't understand. If we fall to 2011 prices, I will be ecstatic. My debt's yeah. not callable. Right. My rents go up and right. Joe and Jane homeowners will lose. That's what you're betting for. Anybody who puts their head in that guillotine and begs for a ma major crash doesn't hurt Dion, Matt, or I. You are hurting every single homeowner in the country. Right. That is what you are asking for. You are not, you are looking at the wrong person. Right. These statements are so the, uneducated as to be insulting. The, the key thing that concerns me the most is that rates, rents go up because now there's a supply. Now there's a lack of even bigger lack of supply, even more demand. And that means they can press up and likely the people that are losing their home, maybe it was because of a job loss. One of the two. It has to be. We, we will become a renter it, nation. It, the big boys will own more stuff like us right. and Joe and Jane. We will go from 68% home ownership to 58. That's when, what you're asking for. Mr. Guillotine or Joe when, Axe or whatever. When, when crashes happen, it's a transference of wealth from the lower exactly. middle class upwards. It's not they don't the have any plan. reserves. They can't hold no. on. Mm -mm. Be, the government, the, for the first time ever in the last two years, the government started bailing out the street. They'd always previously bailed out the banks. And while that's good, the, the challenge becomes when somebody still can't make their payment, the government can't step in. They, it's been proven unconstitutional. There's, that's not going to happen again. And so knowing that that can't happen again, it really is sad because I know that the way, the fastest way for me to get far more wealthy is by calamity occurring and me being prepared Another and the crash. not prepared. I don't want to crash. I don't want to crash because it's not good for people. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for people's psyches. I want there to be the opportunity for people to get into homes. And so a moderate market is more what I'm looking for. But at the same time too, Dan and I talked about this last week um, on his, or this, uh, yeah, last week on his live stream. The biggest challenge that there is, is that for six decades or seven decades, we produced over 20 million homes a year. And this last decade, we only produced 5 million. There is a major supply issue and Mike, builders this time, they aren't building into it. They no. are, they People are love to quote 10.9 months of inventory. 9.7 of that is either not started or, yeah, right. look at that. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's not there, folks. Sorry. It's crazy. It's I'll just do that. Literally six, six decades of over 20 wow. million, six decades in a row. And so this is why I look at it. And some people say, oh, well, what about the silver tsunami? Do you realize how old people are living now today and the fact that they're bringing in home care? It's, it's not going to happen like you think it is. I can tell you, I have, li listen to this. I've got three sets of grandparents, all of whom are in their 80s, some of whom are in their 90s, and they all still live in their homes. So the people that are getting to 65 and they think that's the silver tsunami that's going to break the back, it's nowhere near. And if you look at the number of homes, I believe that number of homes I want to say is something like 6 million or 10 million or something like that. It's so not a thing because it's not going to happen all at once. It's going to happen over time. And it's barely, it doesn't even make up for the lack of building that we're doing over this last decade and the future decade with prices being what they are, we're not going to build. People yeah. aren't going to build. They're going to build very, very, very measured, especially with rates that are crazy. Ian, kind of closing thoughts on this. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, one impact to the silver tsunami is a lot of times people would sell their big house in their expensive area and move to Arizona or Florida. <laughs> That's not going to happen anymore. Buying a small house in that area is, is not going to save you any money with interest rates where they are and prices where they are. Mm -hmm. But the last thing that this person doesn't think about, if we had this massive crash, how long would it take us to be in front of the tax assessor saying, 
here's the current values. Here's the current comps. Not only is my life going to improve by rents going up, but my tax bill that the tenants pay is going to go down. Absolutely. I, that, it happened to me last time. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So can it's, you do me a favor, read the quote one more time? Cause I want to close with something. I'm also going to put it in. I'm going to cover the name because I'm not a jerk. Yes. And, but I'll, I'll put the yeah, actual We don't want this so as blowback see. on the person. We just want the idea answered yeah. and the concept yeah. answered. That's all. People who have tons of investments are in denial. We are going to see prices go as low as 2011. I would bet the farm and put my head on a guillotine and hand the lumberjack landlord his ax that the housing market is going to, to majorly crash. I have total confidence that I am walking away with my head when all is said and done. So as I kind of close this out, I want to be very clear, and, and I swore earlier on purpose, because what that quote doesn't understand is the three of us and folks like us are beyond fine. We are in a better shape. What this quote wants is mom and dad who own one home. It's all they own. They want mom and dad to lose the home and mom and dad to become a rich. That's what that says. This person doesn't understand cost structures, 30-year fixed rate debt, rental demand, and it's okay. You keep watching those crash channels. Let them worm, worm into your head. Just keep sitting on the sidelines and doing nothing. It's okay. We, you know, there goes 2% of our competition. But the, the, the comment, like, again, I, people don't get it. I wish we'd go back to 2011. Yeah. I'm here today because of 2011. I'm here today with a bigger Rolodex, a bigger stack, bigger connections. We, we deployed 3 million bucks last time. I could deploy 30 million bucks this time. Please let this person be right. Mm -hmm. Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and on Instagram. Live stream Sundays at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. And Dion, yourself? When the car alarms aren't going off outside. <laughs> you can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And my live stream is going to be Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Today's might be a little bit short because the second it's done, I'm heading to Oregon to see if a quad can take me out. Nice. Don't even know what that. Oh, quad, quad like runner, eight. like a yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. I was thinking a gun, given the guy who's got seven guns and a sword in his <laughs> office. I'm like, what the heck? My guns quad? Are How many are missing? If I'm down to seven. <laughs> I meant in the room. There are other rooms with other guns. Uh, right. I <laughs> yeah, I got you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ciao. Mike.